Okay, we start now. Many years ago, there was a temple in Thailand known as the Temple of the Gold Buddha, which is really well known for its gigantic statue of Buddha. Legend has it that when the monks of this monastery learned that the Mongols were on the warpath, they decided that the best way to preserve this religious relic from being dismantled or harmed in any way was to cover the statue up with clay and concrete so that the Mongols, in theory, would come across this, see a statue of very little worth or value and just pass it by. Well, the plan worked and over the years, the statue has been preserved. Over a decade had passed, a monk decides to come out and pray underneath the statue when a rock falls onto his head. He looks up and sees a hole from the statue where the rock had come from and sees gold shining from the statue. He went to go tell all his buddies. They all came back out. They uncovered the statue and revealed the gigantic golden Buddha. What does this story have to do with anything? Everything. I think this is it. My final load as a truck driver. Taking these metal parts to Denver, Colorado. And hopefully from there I'll get to turn around and take the truck back to Tulsa to turn it in. Oh, this is it. Growing up, our family moved around a lot, and by a lot, I'm talking about by the time I graduated from high school, I lived in 20 different places of residence amongst three different states, six elementary schools, two junior highs, and two high schools. As such, learning to adapt became an essential survival skill. I would observe and study the people, the culture, and the environment around me so that I can build relationships quickly and make the next six to 18 months as enjoyable as possible. On the one hand, this meant that everything in my life was temporary. I mean, heck, what's the point of devoting myself to one school when just a few months later I'm going to be committing the same amount of devotion to another school? This also helped me learn to be quite comfortable at the bottom of the social ladder. On the other hand, I learned to be very good at learning new skills very quickly. I was constantly in the library learning and researching on anything I could find that would help me become more relatable and learn new skills that I could use to leverage the right kind of attention. I was by no means an expert on anything. But I knew just enough to be able to make myself useful and to blend into just about any crowd. I would refer to myself as a coconut because on one hand I'm rough and scruff and not very pleasant looking on the outside, but I can certainly make everything else taste that much better. I am really good at helping people. I'm very well read in motivational and success literature. I've received a lot of awards and accolades for all the times that I've helped this group or assisted that organization. Even when it came to my help, my wife had found a really good plant. I started following the plant with her and I'd lost 85 pounds. I was on the road to good health. And this is a skill that had served me really well up until I started driving a truck about three years ago. Driving a truck is a decent, honest living. I get to travel country while my wife and kids get to enjoy the benefits of a roof over their heads. But for someone whose entire life was based on the service and camaraderie of others, being banished to work and live in this isolation chamber for six to eight weeks were really wreaked havoc on my psyche. This became a huge culture shock to me. 
to realize that my entire identity up to this point has been based on everybody else. Everything that I've done, receiving an Eagle Scout, my graduation, everything I've done to this point has been in the service or in the assistance of somebody else. This became my tipping point. When I started truck driving, the very first thing I realized that there is absolutely no way I'm gonna survive listening to the same 12 songs 12 times in a row on 12 different stations in 12 different states. Uh-uh, that's not gonna happen. Through online media such as YouTube and podcasting, I was immersed in over 100 hours of great customized educational content every single week in every industry from business and entrepreneurship to athletics and sports to religion. And that's why I've referred to this place as my monastery. I eat here, I live here, I sleep here, I work here, I pray here. I've been able to study and learn from some of the greatest influencers of our planet. And through all the years of study and personal contemplation, I've discovered a pattern that every single person had in common. And that's where Force Fed comes in. Every single one of us has the potential to be great. I believe that. But I truly believe that there is something within each one of us that's even beyond that. I believe that every one of us is a divine being that has been covered up with all of this clay and soot and the mud of this world. I'm too fat. I look ugly. I can't be great. I'm handicapped. But there is a divine being within each and every one of you. And I want to help you break that clay and soot off of you. Wash it clean and find your divine reality. And I believe this so wholeheartedly that I am willing to quit my job so I can devote more time and resources to sharing this message of helping you find your divine reality. So come with me as I leave this convent, renew my social life, and present to you Force Fed.